Hey, greetings YouTube. Performance reviews where I give you the review from the technician's point of view. Today we're going to do a retrospective review on the Hoover Wind Tunnel bagless. Now this was not the first bagless vacuum, or not even the first dual chamber that Hoover made. The first dual chamber was actually based on the Hoover Elite. Man, was that a bad machine. Anyways, so this is basically a Hoover Tempo converted to be bagless, more or less. So, if, if you're not familiar, this was made by the Maytag era of Hoover. Hoover is now owned by a different company, so some of his design philosophies thankfully have gone away with newer Hoovers. And this was really the time period which Hoover was noticeably going downhill rather rapidly. And this would not be the last in a long line of bad ideas from Hoover Maytag. So let me show you what's here show you what it comes with, and we're gonna go over kind of its quirks and features Daddy Doug style with this machine. I'm not gonna do like a whole house review. We know it's a bad cleaner. We know it doesn't do hard floors and doesn't do a lot of things that modern vacuums do, but I wanna show it to you because I trashed and probably repaired thousands of these things over the years. And this one was bought as new old stock and is on loan to me by our Aunt Sylvia. So big thank you to our Aunt Sylvia for loaning us uh, this machine. If this is your first time tuning into the channel, thank you so much. Give this video a thumbs up. That helps us out a whole lot. I'm gonna put some common supplies for this down in the description, just in case you have one of these or you're trying to get some of those supplies. There's not a lot left. What stuff is available, I'll put a few links in the description. Hopefully that helps you out. That helps us out on the channel. And boy, uh, it's strange to have one of these new in the box. I think the first thing I'm gonna address is the mismatching of the color. That is period correct that they would mismatch some of the parts. They thought it looked good and some of these parts, they just kind of put whichever one on there was being molded at the time. Ugh, that, that sound just gives you an idea of what we're talking about. So the other part that's often mismatched not on this particular cleaner, but sometimes these are blue or clear or these are off. That's not because they've been replaced. That's just because of how they did it. Again, this is a very original machine. Came with a handheld turbo. Really never had enough suction to make that work at our particular high altitude over here. Dusting brush. Upholstery tool. And that's what was up there. Uh, the other thing is we'd have a two-piece wand right here, and then you would have a long crevice tool. Now, I actually kind of like this crevice tool. It's wide enough, it allows a little bit more airflow, narrow enough it gets in places, and again, it's very long. I do like this crevice tool. I used to keep one of these for use on the end of my central vacuum uh, at my folks' house. You had a very short stretch hose. This hose was under two meters long, very small. As you can see, this one's barely been used. It's already discolored and weird. So let's open this. And there's this nice throw lever. Always appreciate the throw lever, but everything is very loose in there. So you have a throw lever and your bagless uh, canister comes out. We'll show you that in just a second. Most importantly, uh, we have a SIBO tab in here and these are SIBO scent tabs. I'll put a link below to these. These are fucking awesome. And on a machine like this, that's notably bad smelling from its design, this helps. Um, there is a filter here and you have to get to it with a screwdriver uh, here, but there is a pre-motor filter under there. Again, we have a SIBO tab that's gonna go back there. The exhaust filter, now this is great. This is a classic Hoover moment. On here, it says HEPA allergy filtration. And as you can see, there is no HEPA filter on here. There is just this triple layer, <laughs> it looks like a kitchen sponge uh, filter, and that's all there was uh, on there. So where do we get the HEPA filter from? Well, that is from this. Let's uh, zoom in on this part of this monstrosity. So this part of this monstrosity, first of all, you had a cup with a lid that you could lose. Now on some of the more deluxe models, they would have a knob where you could turn this filter and the idea was that this filter, when you turned it, it would shake itself off. Again, this one doesn't really have it. You have this that lifts up. Okay, that's cool. 
And then what we have here is you have knockers. Hear that? So the filter. You actually have these knockers that interact with the filter, like so. Now this filter was made out of like this Teflon infused paper. This filter actually rinses and comes clean really well with a lot of use. So even though it plugged up very fast, it was very easy to come clean for whatever reason. These only needed replacing about every six months or so, which was again, at the time of bagless vacuums where we had Eurekas that needed fil new filters pretty much every time you used it. This was kind of an advancement in terms of technology. You have your screen here. And again, there's no cyclone in here. There is no cyclonic technology. Later versions of this would have all sorts of gimmicks and things to help clean this filter. And they would go so far as to putting a self-cleaning filter with a motor in one of the vacuums. Again, very bad ideas from Hoover. All right, I, I have to apologize. This one is a little warped right here. And that's from sitting in the Waco sun. This was kept in a non-temperature controlled warehouse in Texas for 20 years. So I think the next thing we're gonna show is you have this gasket, this big gasket, and this is normally gets dirty. It just leaks dirt everywhere. And you see that this has only been used a handful of times in my presence. I was here when it was taken out of the box. I should have filmed it. <laughs> Anyways, it's quite bad. The uh, lever for the height adjustment is decent. Now it says hard floor, but there's no actual hard floor shut off, so don't use this on hard floor. Now on the bottom side of this machine, you're going to see a newer TTI style brush roller. And that's because this machine was sitting in a warehouse for so long that the brush roller had gotten destroyed. Now I'm gonna try and insert some footage here from a different vacuum, but basically this was made at the time when Hoover used open bearings, which meant about once a year the bearings needed new grease, sometimes six months with heavy use. Anybody who's had a Hoover convertible or any of the old Hoover products is well aware of the bearing situation in the brush roller. Uh, so this has a newer style brush roller. And again, you can still get these. These are made by CWP, contracted uh, for TTI, who now owns Hoover. So when we do a pickup test, keep in mind, this has a better brush roller in it than what this would have left the factory with. Um, I guess the other thing is you have this manual height adjustment that's spring-loaded. We have the nomenclature, and uh, this is a 5758-900. Uh, 12, uh, 12 amps, and then this one was assembled in Mexico. So, Hancho El Mexico. Um, the other thing I think that's interesting from Hoover's from this period is not only do they have the serial number, which this one is 0604, in case anybody's wondering, but this also has the UPC on the bottom. And the reason the UPC was put on the bottom of these is at box stores, what would happen is they would sell their last one in the box and they would need to sell the floor model and nobody would know what it was. So they started putting UPCs on all of them. Little interesting uh, fact there. Now, for some reason, this was put onto the machine and this comes off and these are, they get brittle, but this goes into the suction path of the machine. So, if for some reason something were to get stuck in here, you I guess you could get to it. You also get to some of the wiring as well. And it's not easy to get to. You have to uh, pry it off just right with a screwdriver. Uh, and then just, like I said, it's just gonna go back like so. So it's not easy to get to. It didn't sound good, but it's actually all right. So there's that. And I guess I guess another thing that's interesting is that the lower cord hook is the same as the upper cord hook. It just doesn't swivel. All right, we've switched to the studio microphone. So you're gonna hear the real sound of the machine. Please excuse the high noise floor. It is summer, so the swamp cooler is running and it is quite loud. You can hear kind of a humming in the background. That's what you're hearing. So I've put down some fine sand, some breakfast cereal, and some fresh animal hair. Let's see how it does in terms of picking this up. Wake up. 
definitely see that wind tunnel technology. <laughs> uh, anyway, anyways, um, I don't know how well it comes out on camera, but almost all that yellow sand is like still on the carpet. You can see it and touch it with your hands. It's like gritty. Um, you know, it did pretty well on the animal hair. Yeah, yeah, it did, it did it all right in the animal hair. Breakfast cereal, of course, is easy for a pickup. So yeah, and it, 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 it did okay, especially for a machine this age. Now, if I take the bin off, you can see some of the fine sand. And I guess this is going to be kind of the fun part of this one. So I want to show you what happened. This is a prime example. So you can see that the pet hair stuck right here. And these would come in and they'd be covered completely in animal hair, even when they're empty. So you can see it picked up a lot of that fine sand, breakfast cereal, and then of course there's stuff in this filter, but I don't want to want to mess with that. So that that's what's inside here, what it picked up right there. I am alluded that this was not great on hard floor. Well, it's actually really bad. We'll see if it's worse than the Royal Power Cast was on hard floor. Maybe the Oric XL21 might be one of the worst ones. Anyways, we're gonna try this thing on hard floor and see what it does. I've got some fine sand and some breakfast cereal. I don't really wanna throw anything else around. <laughs> All right, I'm not gonna even go a full pass on that. That did exactly what I thought I was gonna do and hit through. Oh my gosh, just like everything out the back side of the machine. <laughs> like breakfast cereal and all, like everything's just like behind the machine now. I mean, I got, oh. All right, so that's why you don't use a machine with a rotating brush on hard floor. And if you do, it better have a fucking squeegee. Wow, that was the worst hard floor pickup I think I've done on the channel. Well, we're gonna have to clean up that mess somehow. And what better to do it with another machine that I've also done a retrospective review on, and I'll uh, link them above, but an Electrolux, which was also available at the same time period this Hoover was. Well, that's a wind tunnel twin chamber style of machine. These came in a variety of colors, and I'm sure a lot of my audience has fond memories of these as children. I have fond memories of trashing these at the vacuum repair shop. Uh, these were quite often not worth fixing when they would come in. That being said, we did fix quite a few of them as well. So, I hope you have enjoyed this look at this machine. It's certainly kind of weird here, like 20 years later, seeing this not trashed and kind of new and better condition than I've ever personally seen one. Like I said, at the repair shop, they would come in pretty clapped or at least very dirty and well used. So seeing one in this condition is just kind of cool. Again, big thank you to our Aunt Sylvia for lending this to the channel for us to take a look at. If you like these sort of retrospective reviews, please leave a comment, give this video a thumbs up. That helps us out a whole lot. And share this on like Vacuum Land or Reddit or wherever you like discussing vacuum cleaners. That being said, if you like discussing vacuum cleaners, check out the links below. We have a vacuum cleaner discord where we talk vacuum cleaners all day long. And if you really like what we're doing, check out our Patreon where we have some exclusive content. Have yourself a wonderful day.